thank the planning committee for inviting me to participate again in the program and also the program the way this section is titled I think is very innovative I haven't seen the management of small renal masses differentiated from localized renal cell carcinoma while that may be a subtle difference I think it recognizes the uh, clear fact that not all small renal masses are kidney cancer and that's part of the problem we have in uh, dealing with the data so Briefly, we've come a long way from the standard surgery removal of tumor masses, and we now recognize this entity which we're talking about, but just to be clear, this is now the commonest way that kidney cancer presents in our societies. Uh, this is the enhancing image characterized, usually solid, although some cystic elements are in some of these lesions. And these patients we were talking about are asymptomatic. As I was reminded in our kidney tumor clinic yesterday, a 30-year-old had right shoulder pain and was imaged and had a left renal mass uh, detected. And that's not an uncommon way uh, for these to be detected. And these patients do not have metastatic disease when they present. So we're faced with this uh, in all of our tumor registries of increasing kidney cancer rates with not much change in the morbidity and this difference is the reason we're up here in part and this paper has been referenced today uh, several times and uh, this is an important observation that despite the uh, trends of increased treatment uh, that these small renal masses look like a large portion of them are quite indolent and the AUA guidelines also have been referenced and represent uh, that recognition that we're not going to see a difference in cure rates with these different uh, modalities to treat small kidney cancers because they're all very similar and we're focusing on things like morbidity. Uh, this paper is another piece of evidence where looking at uh, the SEER data that the smaller the mass, the lower the metastatic rate, and the higher the survival. And the break point in this is somewhere in the uh, three, four, five centimeter range. And hence, we've used the term four centimeters. Three centimeters has come from the VHL experiences at the NCI, and metastatic disease hasn't been seen under three centimeters, apparently, in that population. So we and others over the last 10 and 15 years have followed patients, usually retrospectively, and noticed that if you plot out the growth rates, which all these lines are, and take an average, that there's a very substantial portion of these tumors that don't grow. And that led us, plus this other data and other information, uh, such as uh, this very important paper from the Mayo Clinic retrospectively of the high rates of benign tumors in small renal masses and uh, depending on the diameter it's in the range of 20 plus percent. So a few years ago in Canada we put together some centers to look at these patients prospectively and the hypothesis as I've outlined is that m although most small renal masses are renal cell carcinoma the majority go sl grow slowly and at that point we felt rarely metastasized early we since know that to be the case and that initial active and I emphasize initial active meaning active monitoring of the patients with delayed treatment for progression would be a reasonable and at least initial management option. So it's remarkable, Rob, how similar our numbers are, that we have 172 tumors now in 151 patients, and this is data up to December of last year. And to be eligible, to be clear, these were elderly patients with significant comorbidities, and we didn't rigidly quantify either of those uh, entry criteria, and a few patients actually refused treatment. Uh, we didn't take patient, patients with limited life expectancy and importantly to try and avoid the bias of enriching for the indolent tumor we wanted patients who had been recently diagnosed not patients where there was a known lesion going back years. We also tried to biopsy these patients if possible and this is now our standard approach to all small renal masses which is something maybe the panel wants to address and we were successful in about half of the patients in getting biopsy material. And as has been pointed out, we serially imaged these patients. And our endpoints were progression, meaning 
growing to four or greater centimeters in uh, maximal diameter, a doubling time based on initially volume of less than 12 months, and of course metastases. Now, the doubling time concept came from the PSA monitoring of patients with prostate cancer, and it wasn't a validated and is not a validated uh, endpoint at this time. And we're interested, of course, in the other things like treatment rates and uh, obviously mortality and the numbers that came off study. Uh, so as I said, we have 172 such tumors. The average size was just over two centimeters at entry, and the follow-up is just under two years. And we're a bit stuck with this follow-up time because in this population we have dropouts for various reasons, and to get past this is, is going to be a bit challenging. Uh, so this is a busy slide, but I draw your attention to the dotted line, which is the average growth rate, and this is based on uh, dimension, maximum dimension, and you can see on average these tumors barely grow. Uh, there are clearly some that do grow, and when we look at the progression rate in this rather short term, two years, we see it's just under 10% and that the majority of these are local progressions, but I'll come back to the fact that two of these patients progress to metastatic disease, and what's very interesting is what, these, uh, what the characteristics of these two patients were. Uh, so the, the progression occurred both by rapid growth and by getting up to this threshold of four centimeters, and because of the population, not all of them were treated, some still are on surveillance, and those that we had biopsy material from, either by taking out the tumor or the kidney, uh, they were uh, kidney cancers in the majority of cases. Uh, so these two patients that progressed, they progressed at rather small size. They were not clearly screened at the beginning for metastases because at that point we thought these were uh, localized uh, tumors, they were indolent, and we didn't necessarily do a full staging assessment. So one of these patients progressed at five months, and we're not entirely sure that they didn't have small volume uh, occult metastatic disease beforehand. The other patient was a little bit longer, and we're more confident that that patient had no clinical evidence of metastatic disease. Uh, Rob Uzo and others have looked at the world experience, and we're somewhere under 10. I'm not sure exactly the number of patients that have been documented to develop metastatic disease. And in the paper that we just had referenced from Rob Uzo, these patients typically grew rapidly before they metastasized. We haven't seen that, so this is a concern to predict for this event of metastatic disease. Now, just very quickly to finish up with our cohort so I can make some general comments, uh, we had, of course, unrelated deaths, and we had a significant portion of these patients who chose to go off study because of anxiety and, and the usual things we know about with surveillance. But importantly, we had very few loss to follow up, so our compliance was actually quite high. Now, this is where it gets interesting, the role of biopsy. As I said, we try to biopsy all of these patients because we don't want to operate on benign disease, and that's a significant confounding factor with the outcomes. And we had 78 biopsies, but unfortunately, and this is quite, um, I think, representative of the experience out there, not all of them are diagnostic. This is multicenter, more or less experience. We would say now about 80% of our patients should have diagnostic biopsies, and there was a significant proportion that were not malignant. So this gave us an opportunity to look at growth rates of malignant and uh, unbiopsied and biopsied but not diagnostic. And the green line represents the growth rates of those that were proven to be malignant as opposed to those that were apparently benign on biopsy, and they're similar. When we look at the waterfall plot, this is a little different than Rob's. We had uh, fewer patients uh, progressing and more being rather indolent. When we overlay the uh, pathology on this, we see a distribution that's not, uh, at least to my uh, statistical eye, very different between those that appear to be getting smaller and those that appear to be getting larger based on relatively short interval, of course, that these uh, patients, even with malignancy, don't always grow, and there isn't a bias towards the uh, malignant population. It would be uh, wrong for me 